What's going on, guys? Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Niners News here on 49ers Hive. My name is Zach Hernandez, and as always, I am joined by my co-host, Matt Llewellyn, and today we're going to be discussing what the 49ers should do in the draft now that there's all these quarterback pieces falling into place, still out there. Matt, how does it affect them? What do they do? Yeah, so Stafford was going to be the one piece that you could potentially get for a reasonable enough price that would have nudged them off of Jimmy Garoppolo. I don't think that Watson is attainable at this point. We've talked about this earlier in the week, and I think that still holds true. I think the price tag is too expensive for the regime. They've shown that they're a little bit conservative at the quarterback position. Uh, so I, I think that Watson's kind of out. There's a couple of avenues that they can pursue. Because of COVID and because of the lack of an NFL combine, I'm pretty convinced that one of these quarterbacks is going to slip and get to 12. Um even if not 12, like 10. But at that point, if the 49ers want to move up, it's going to be way less prohibitive than going to number two or three would be otherwise. Um, so they're going to be in play for one of these rookie quarterbacks. They have to decide if they're going to let it rock with Jimmy Garoppolo or depending on who the quarterback is, um, if they're going to insert a quarterback and, and think that uh, you know they're going to go quarterback there and just let it rock with the rookie. The other direction they can go is corner, which is going to be a huge need. Um, and I do think that there's a chance that uh, a corner like Patrick Sertan would fall to them. Um, if not, I've heard J.C. Horn thrown out there, but I think he's kind of grabby. I think he's a little penalty prone. and We're going to be looking at another Akella Witherspoon situation where, you know, it's cool. Okay, you do some good things, but, you know, there are a lot of penalties on you, dude, like <laughs> that we can't afford. Um, but Patrick Sertan or somebody like that. Uh, the third move that they can make is trade back from 12 to the late first round, pick up some mid-rounders and start addressing the interior offensive line with somebody like Creed Humphrey or you know maybe a Rashawn Slater at the tackle position if Trent Williams leaves. There are moves they can make. I don't think at this point they're going to trade up to a number two for a Zach Wilson. I know that we had talked about that before, um, about trading and going and getting their guy. I think the Matt Stafford move kind of tips their hand a little bit in that they're they're okay with Jimmy Garoppolo if the only other alternative is overpaying for a better player. You know what I mean? So I, I think that they could potentially go Trey Lance or Justin Fields if they fall. I think those are the two that are most likely to fall. Trey Lance because he didn't play at all this year. Um, they played one game and their season got canceled. Um, or Justin Fields, who really had a tough season. I know he had that great semifinal game against Clemson where they beat Trevor Lawrence and, and the Clemson Tigers. But then he was really kind of, I mean, that Alabama game was a shellacking. You know, it wasn't close. And it drove home the thing that, you know, the one knock on Justin Fields is that he holds the ball for a really long time trying to make a play. And that works in college because the best players are just so far and above away better than other players. But in the NFL, that won't cut it. So there are some questions there, regardless of what people will tell you. It's really hard for regimes to pin their their hopes and dreams and their jobs, really, to a guy at quarterback. So there are there is potential for guys to fall. Um, so the Fort Nash could go that way. I really do think they're going to go corner in the first round or trade back for line. But th that's just me. Yeah, you know, I could see it. Um, it's going to be interesting to see which of these quarterbacks fall. I agree with you. I think one at least does. Um, this hype around Zach Wilson is building up. I don't think he'll be the one to fall. I think that teams, um, I don't know, maybe the fans are completely separate from the teams. But it seems like a lot of the hype is coming out of these, you know, draft reporters and these, you know, big name guys as well. So we'll see how it shapes out. Um, Trevor Lawrence, Zach Wilson, I feel like those are going to be the top two quarterbacks no matter what taken. Um, I do think, though, that the 49ers, they're actually in a pretty good position because they don't actually need to reach on a quarterback as much as they would right. have, you know, a couple of years ago. Maybe they should have a couple of years ago, but they didn't. Um, they can, you know, bolster the roster, stick with Jimmy if they feel comfortable, take an offensive lineman, take a corner. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about taking Kyle Pitts. I don't want that. I don't want to see that. Uh, take that would be a mistake. Please. I think tight end more than anything else is such a luxury position that you have. Yep. Uh, well, just listen, 
I'm not going to indulge Chiefs fans. It's really easy when Patrick Mahomes is throwing him the goddamn ball. But even if you think that Travis Kelsey is the best tight end in football, George Kittle is right there at number two. So to go out there and draft Pitts at 12 is such it's 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 a wasted pick. There there are limits to BPA, and I know a lot of people are on board with like you take the best player available. There are limits to that. Tight end is one of those limits. Like if you have George Kittle, you do not need to draft a tight end. When you have holes in the secondary, when you have holes on the offensive line, we have no idea whether the 49ers are going to be able to re-sign Trent Williams or not. Why would you go and 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 draft a tight end? That's something that like Jacksonville does. That's something that a trash team, you know, like uh, name trap the Jets. That's something the Jets would do. Oh, we have all these holes. You know what we should do? Draft a tight end. That makes sense. We don't have a line. That's fine. We don't have a running back. That's fine. We don't even really have a quarterback. That's fine. But tight end, that's the way to go. No, that's not what you do. That's not good team building. Kyle Pitts at 12. If the 49ers draft Kyle Pitts at 12, that would be a huge mistake. Yeah, or drafting another edge rusher, which I keep seeing. I will stop being a fan. We all know that. I'll stop being a fan if they draft an edge rusher at 12. Uh, Look. I, I, the draft network, I have tremendous amount of respect for them. Jordan Reed, tremendous amount of respect for them. But I saw them put out a, a mock draft the other day that had them taking an edge rusher at at twelve. I forget the who. dude from Miami, right? Yes, yes, I think so. Yeah. Hell no! Come on, they are not taking another edge rusher. They should not take another so, edge rusher. Not only would that be bad because that would be the 49ers' what sixth, fifth, or sixth year in a row they've taken an edge rusher, but at that position, that's a reach for that guy. It's just bad all around. It's bad all around. It's not a huge position of need. They have much, you know, bigger positions of need than edge rusher. Um, if they wanted, they can bring back Kerry Hyder. They could trade for J.J. Watt. They have Nick Bosa coming back. There are other options than wasting a first-round pick on a position of strength. Did you and Did you see the social post from Kerry Hyder? It was waiting like, patiently. I'm waiting. Yeah, yeah waiting patiently. Like, you know, hopefully that's not about that, but I have a feeling it is. Yeah, I know. It, it, but, okay, so I'm just hoping that it's Kerry Hyder not understanding how the league works and that they can't just offer him contracts before the league year starts. <laughs> that's what I'm hoping. <laughs> but they had a deadline at the end of the season, and now it's like, well, we can't do anything until the league year starts, dude. Like, we want to, but I'm hoping that's what it is. But, yeah, I've always said that Kerry Hyder could have priced himself out um, I think the same thing about Verrett. So again, but the, but that just goes to the point. You don't want to overpay for quarterback. You don't want to overdraft up another edge rusher. Uh, you don't want to do this stuff because you have so many other holes to fill. You have so many other areas of need that BPA does have its have its limits. If you, BPA, okay, cool. Maybe the next like the you know third guy down from that on the BPA is a position of need. Of course, you're going to draft that guy. So yeah, yeah. Kyle Pitts at twelve. That's Terrible thinking. Miami edge rusher at 12. I can't even remember his name. That's how not good he is. So no disrespect yeah. to that guy. Just that's not what I'm looking at for this team. And that's not what this team should be looking at. All due no. respect. I would much rather them feel comfortable taking a project like a Trey Lance than a sure thing pass rusher at 12 because I don't feel like they need that. I feel like, you know, they're fine on the defensive line as is. They were had a solid defensive line last season with the majority – you know, out a bunch of plug and play pieces, Nick Bosa out, Solomon Thomas out. Um, I would much rather them take a Trey Lance and, and try and work that in for a year, sit him out, have him learn the system. Cause you at least have a big piece potentially moving forward that you do know you need that at, at, at his position. So <laughs> I'd much rather see him do that. Maybe yeah, I'm and let's not that. forget that there's guys like there's a JJ Watt on the market that you could have for mm-hmm. like a second or a third round pick that you could bring in as another edge rusher. And let's not forget that they're getting Nick Bosa back. Nick Bosa is going to be back. He's going to wreak havoc like he had before. Is you know, uh, even if even if D Ford doesn't come back, there's a potential for an injury settlement there. Um there are things that you can do that you don't have to spend the 12th pick in the draft on another edge rusher on a position where you do have some strengths. There you do have rotational guys. They've proven Kerry Hyder, Coach K on this defensive line, who, by the way, Coach K is staying. He hasn't gone anywhere. So you know that you're going to have continuity there. You know you're going to have a coach who knows what he's doing, who can put the people in position to succeed. For better or worse, the team's probably going to resign 
Solomon Thomas as a rotational piece. So you're talking about at least Nick Bosa, Eric Armstead, Solomon Thomas. Then you got potential guys like DJ Jones and Ronald Blair coming back as rotational guys. You throw in a JJ Watt for a future second or third round pick, and you got a good defensive line. You don't need to put 12 in there. Now, when you think about Jaquaski Tart, free agent, Kwan Williams, free agent, Emmanuel Mosley, restricted free agent, Kella Witherspoon, free agent, Jason Verrett, free agent, Richard Sherman, free agent. I don't know. It kind of seems like if Patrick Sertan can fall to 12, that seems like a good move to me. Just, just yeah. me, though. I agree with that. That's a huge position of need. They should have addressed it last year. They didn't. They have a chance to now. I would be more than happy with Sertan at 12 if he fell. Um because it's a sure thing. It bolsters the secondary, helps out the pass rush. It helps all around. So I'd be totally for it. Um, I think that's going to do it for us today. Go ahead, Matt. You got something to add? No, I was going to say, even if it's not Sertan, you know, again, J.C. Horn is a guy. Maybe you trade back a little further and get an Asante Samuel Jr. There are guys to be had here at corner, and that's an important position. Interior O-line is another one. So, again, to say edge rusher or whatever – now, if a Trey Lance falls, of course, if you if you feel like that's your guy, go get him. But, you know, this overpay and, you know, these people want 49ers to automatically upgrade the quarterback. There are a lot more beneficial things to the team they can do in the draft than than that. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Um, we're going to do a mock draft here, I think, before too long. But, uh, yeah, we'll definitely kind of go off of that. So we'll see. Yep. I think that's going to do it for us today, guys. If you like what you see, do us a solid. Hit the subscribe button below. Like this video. Drop a comment. It feeds the algorithm more than you know. Um, what do you think the 49ers will do in the draft? Are they going to trade up for a quarterback, stand pat, draft uh, Kyle Pitts and piss Matt off? What do you think they'll do? Yeah. Uh, listen, if they piss me off, I'll still be around. So make sure you click the bell so you never miss a video, especially when I'm going to go on one of my rants. Uh, they kind of become a trademark. I don't mean to do them the way that I do, but it just kind of comes out. You don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss a video. Please click the bell for notifications. It really helps us out. And as always, we love you. And until next time, go Niners.